So we we're talking about food. Yeah, well, yeah, and you know, I'm glad you're here, Cameron, because I'm really interested in the difference between Bangladesh and America. Like I told you, I think once in the car that I have a minor in anthropology, so I'm obsessed with how different cultures perceive things and mm -hmm. how different cultures perceive themselves. So, as you look at American food culture and think about how you grew up, like what's different? Our food culture and here, first of all, we never had this event. Like, you're, over here you have a sampling, food sampling uh, option. We never had this sort of option in my country. Uh, so whenever you have to go, the food's pretty, the, among the taste, it's sort of like most of the people, like 99.9% .9 are non-vegetarians. Yeah. Uh, even like, if, even if there's a religion dif religious difference, they they prefer non-vegetarian more. So yeah. religion is is plays a huge part in your in your culture's diet. Correct. Correct. Yeah, and that's not something that in America we really have. Yeah. So since we grow, when we grow up, like our family and like culture, <laughs> we are taught we have a private tutor of religion, private tutor. So over there, they teach us our food habits, the way that we should talk to people the importance of afterlife and how food, how cattle should be slaughtered uh, for them, them to be eaten in a halal. We, we call the food halal. Right. It means the cattle has to be slaughtered in a particular way. So that has to be uh, maintained. Yeah. And so that shapes so much of what you guys do probably, right? Right, right. For over here, uh, uh, in our religion, like over here, you have meat. They're slaughtered in, like, I guess, in machines, if I'm yeah. not wrong. Oh, they? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, in machines, chickens and um, la goat or cows, they're slaughtered in machines. But over here, they have to slaughter. Uh, on, I mean, it, does, it doesn't sound good, but they have to slaughter on their neck. No, that sounds good to me, right? Like, we were talking on the way over just how a whole generation of Americans uh -huh. don't associate an animal with food. Like they don't associate the act of butchering, uh, of, of the slaughter, of, of that very natural process with the food that they're eating. And that's completely wrong and immoral and unethical because it leads people to take for granted their food supply. Mm -hmm. It leads people to not appreciate uh, the sacrifice of the cattle. Right. The cattle are, uh, so <coughs> what we, like our religion taught us that <coughs> the cattle are making a sacrifice for us. I mean, they have their right too. Right. They have the right to. So when, so we were taught, I don't know how scientifically or how much it is right. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. So we were taught that if the cattle are slaughtered in a particular fashion, in God's name, they are, they are quickly, their body is like, lose their senses faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why the cattle has less pain compared yeah. to be slaughtered if they're slaughtered in machines. And I think that's exactly my point. Like you have cultural and religious traditions that require you to be intimately involved with your food. So it's hard for you to disrespect nature. But when your right. food comes in a box and it doesn't even look like the animal anymore, mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to forget that nature is important. And, and in America, I think that that's, that's the issue that we struggle with is that how do you teach environmentalism to a kid who thinks that chicken is brown and covered in breading and deep fried and, and it's not it's not right it's not good so one thing uh we, we had this topic talk like I, I remember like in high school i guess i was starting I, we were taught like w the importance of meat so we were given food a packaged food like whatever like a plate they used to key, give a small uh card and over there it had a picture of a chicken uh-huh <laughs> so when there's a picture of a chicken like eh, it looks so ill yeah. But guy, dude, you're eating that and it so, tastes so yummy. Yeah. So <coughs> over there we were taught like, hey, what you're eating is actually beef. He's making sacrifice. And we were at... Do that, it cuts out. Okay, cool. Are you good? Yeah, we, we good? No. The... Now we are. Okay, we're good. All right, cool. <clears throat> so we were given a token with the animal's picture over there that that animal is making a sacrifice to have this bring to bring the food to your table so we, so whenever we eat we have to appreciate god we have to appreciate that the the food process the food chain which brought this animal 
the food to our table. Yeah. This, this plays a very important part. Yeah, we've really lost that uh, in this culture in the last 50 years. And a lot of it has to do with um, making food affordable. Initially, I think it was meant to come from a, a place of, of good, like making food cheaper, more efficient, getting rid of um, hunger and starvation. I, I get you, but what's your, what's your solution? Like whenever like, people bring out a problem, they have, they do have a solution in mind, like random, vague solution. What's, what would be your opinion? How well, I mean, we need to them? get back to locally sourced food. Uh, we ship food all over the world, and there's no need to do that. Like with these folks, the chefs that are here, uh, a lot of the chefs in Pittsburgh emphasize the idea that you shouldn't be shipping grapes from Argentina and beef from Japan to America. It's inefficient. It's unethical. It's consuming oil, gas, it's, it's, um, it's just not the way to do things. And the idea that um, food is an industrial process is, is proving to be unhealthy for people. So, well, my, well, like back home, like we own a family business. So over there, our main target is like reducing the cost to mass production economies of scale and reducing the cost. So, if you say that people growing, grew food here, land prices are more expensive, labor cost is higher, so ultimately the food cost is going to get, going to get higher. So in that case, people will be discouraged to buy food, or they will, they're surely going to complain. They're going to say, hey, it doesn't matter what we eat, yeah. but we're from where we eat, but we need the food prices to be low. What yeah. would be that solution? Yeah. What do you think? Like, Well, I think that people have been taught by large corporations that cheap food has to be made that way. And if you make your food locally, uh, it can be affordable <clears throat> and local. Uh, when it comes from a thousand miles away, it's not cheaper, even if it is industrial, because you're still shipping it thousands of miles, you're still refrigerating it. There's an energy cost associated with that that far outweighs the actual cost in dollars that we pay out. So I'm gonna take a break and get some water because my throat's going, because I'm yelling into the spike. Uh, but you guys should continue this conversation or go find somebody to continue it. I'll be right back. Frames encoded 40,000, Roth Josh went to grab food, I guess. Yeah, I guess this is only the first time he went to grab some food. They get enough. Yeah. So, Buzz, I have heard that the way people talk or convey a message in a certain manner can influence their mind. Uh-huh. Yeah, so you're a sound engineer. Yes. So how would talking to someone or convincing someone, for example, saying that vegetarian, so the problem statement is vegetarian, argument is vegetarian, food, vegetarian food is better than non-vegetarian food. So how would you use your skill or sound engineering techniques to convince people more easily is there any method um i don't know i don't know about that i, I think the whole podcasting format uh because you get an opinion out there for a couple you, you actually get to have a real conversation it's not cut up and uh people can speak you know honestly about and you can't like a commercial or like a tv show someone speaks for 20 seconds and it's cut off oh okay when you podcast it's a lot different and there's you know way more um there's way more depth of conversation, I think, and that you get your point, you know, any point across way better if you know what you're talking about through podcasts. That's why I've learned so much from podcasts. I listen to food podcasts about, I listen to po political podcasts mm -hmm. and ones that tie both of them together, you know. But from a sound engineering standpoint, it's really not gonna make, you know. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, all right, I get you. So I was thinking like, whether is there any relation or not? Yeah. So they're not. I mean, I'm sure, uh, the better the audio quality, the more perception people take it, you know, more seriously if it sounds professional, but I'm not sure about, you know. All right, all right, cool. Which food did you like best here? 
I just had a short rib that was awesome. Uh, it's from Savoy, I think, across, across, right across from us. I'm stuffed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad about the ashroom guy. <laughs> I feel bad about the ashroom guy. <laughs> he has been serving non-stop since last hour. Yeah, there's a. If you, if you can see here, is, I'll is show you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's a. A hundred foot uh, line for ice cream right now. I like the sushi. This sushi, sushi. A guy is like giving a sushi. Is there? Yeah. I haven't like, gone over there. It's is a it a uh, savvy food? The name of the store like, is a savvy food. That's Savoy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Savoy food, right? Yeah. They're they're a restaurant right in the Strip, Savoy, and then uh, were they giving out sushi? Yeah. Oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't miss it. I went right over it. Yeah. Those are tasty. I mean, not. It's not the weed wrap. It's something special, like okay. brown color wrap. Do you want to pause it? No. It's, it's just gonna keep rolling. I'm just putting this on charge. Do I have to sit here or? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my girlfriend's coming here. Oh, right now? Yeah, I'm calling her. Oh, to the event? To the event. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll ask her, hey, she, she's very shy. <laughs> I'll, I'll force her to podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, put it in. Make her uncomfortable. Yeah, then go ahead. Is it too far away? All right, the location, John, okay. Okay. Yeah, sure, it's a football field. All right, sure. The event looks so lively if it's outdoor. I didn't hear you. The event looks so lively if it's outdoor. Yeah, yeah. Like even back in our country, we had, we had events like these, like small booths, uh -huh. small tables, but they were all indoors. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice when it's outdoors. You know, like everyone's cooking, it smells good, and there's people yeah, all around. The yeah. weather is cleared up real nice too. Mm. And it, it isn't so warm. I'm just looking for a pair of sunglasses, and I can't find it. The best part over over here is like people are not talking only about food. Like we have a podcast station here. There's a group who are promoting East Liberty. There's a group. There's a nonprofit. Oh, they're also doing podcasts. No, I mean. Oh, oh, people talking. I see. There are people talking. Like yeah, yeah. they have a booth. Yeah, on, yeah. On, on, on promoring East Liberty yeah. area. There's a booth like promoting German and American student exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. There's a lot of different tastes here to talk about. You know. So, what do you do in your off time? Uh, record music downstairs at the, at the hardware store. <laughs> oh, I, I love your station. Yeah, it's, it's like the first fun. day I came down, <laughs> I was like, oh, whole five yeah. new speakers, like, oh, snap. I thought it was Josh's. Well, it, some of it's his, but a lot of it's mine too. And uh, yeah, that whole downstairs, you didn't see it before it was built, huh? Yeah, that, was, that whole downstairs was just a big open room with uh, yeah. supports going down the middle, and we. So we're talking about the hardware store where Buzzy has this very cool, how would you term your office? Uh, just an audio workstation, like a gorilla underground kind of uh, track, looks like a cave almost, uh, audio station in a cave almost, but uh, yeah, there's uh, we have an ISO booth, a podcast booth, and then uh, my room's just a big room with brick walls and uh, planning to put a pallet wall up, which will be interesting. And uh, always in construction, nothing's finished. We're building a drum booth, which will be neat. 
so I won't annoy people when I play drums, mm. which happens a lot. Cool. So, well, what's your? Is there any message behind the like skull of a bull on top of your? Oh station? no, that was Josh's from the old. <laughs> studio. I just, I just. I just uh, put it back up because we had it laying around. All right. I didn't want to throw it away. So what I thought, like, first is like, okay, it must be a secret message. No, 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 like, not at all, no. people tattoo. Well, or... that's, a, that's a good question for Josh, though, because it, it is his. Who knows? I don't know. We should ask Josh, like, what yeah. is this about? Because he used to, Josh used to own a recording studio in the South Side, and I, I interned there right out of high school, and that's how I met Josh. But uh, that was always on the wall there, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the story behind it. I put it up in, in my studio without even asking, so. The first time I came to the hardware store was in November or October. Okay. So yeah, so that was... Downstairs wasn't... It was all empty. It was yeah. all, all other construction. Yeah. But now it's wow. Yeah. Wow. You guys did a great job reno yeah, re renovating you. it. It will continue. It will always be under construction. We're always doing new stuff and finishing old stuff. Nothing's ever uh, to the date and like planned, you know, dead on. So... I've seen like you, you still have a lot of spaces in the hardware store in the basement. Yeah, there's... On, on the, what's your plan? Like, what are you going to um, do? I think behind the wall, they're doing a print shop. I don't know where they... Um, so behind the wall, there's the ISO booth, which that was uh, the walls and the floor that's going up now. And then behind that will be a print shop. Then on the other side, once we're done building and everything's cleared out, we might make that a second conference room. So uh, who knows? I mean, we could do anything. It's just getting the funding to, to put up the drywall and, you know... All that kind of stuff. It's always slow moving, but plus we're all pooped out because we've been building for a year non-stop every weekend. You know, it's either work at the hardware store or build. You know, work to build at the hardware store. So, do you have an extra pair of headphone headphones? Not on me. No, no, no. Uh, okay. We only brought one. I, I forgot. Yeah. There's too much background music. There. For the co-working space. Well, Woo! So, Joe.